Sometimes people ask me, how were you called into ministry? The question seems to always come as that person is questioning their own vocation to ministry or as a scientist or whatever, wondering how you know exactly what you're supposed to do with your life. I wish I had a dramatic story like Saul on the road to Damascus who was breathing threats against the disciples of Jesus and a light from heaven beamed him to the ground and the voice of Jesus called him into ministry. Very clear. No booming voice of Jesus here calling down from heaven and knocking me to the ground. I wish I could tell you that, like the legend about Martin Luther, a bolt of lightning struck right near where I was walking and knocked me to the ground. That was the very moment that Luther promised that he would become a monk. No lightning strike either. No booming voice from heaven, no lightning strikes. How do you know, people ask? Well, sometimes you don't. Or sometimes it's a process. And almost always it's a long journey probably has been for you too, or it currently is. But now that I think about it, there was a persistent light, a beacon guiding me toward paths as yet untrodden in the words of my favorite prayer. The light was a mentor who nudged me to consider seminary a word I had never heard. The light grew stronger when my family supported this crazy idea. The light was strongest when I was invited in to share as part of a church community to try on the role and find that it might be a fit even if it's far from perfect. In addition to this kind of light leading me, I also had a group of wise ones to travel with and the desire to search for the Christ I was only just beginning to get to know. This is Epiphany. A season of the church year when we remember how Christ has been revealed to the world. An invitation to look up and see if there may be something guiding us. Following beyond the edges of the map, searching for the Christ we may just be getting to know. We don't know much about these magi, do we? We read that they followed a star to Bethlehem, but who were they? They may have been kings. They may have been astronomers. There may have been three, but likely many, many more. There may have been women, in addition to the wise men that get all the press in Matthew. What about that star? Was it a comet? A supernova explosion? A planet? Well, as tempting as it is, I think we should stop trying to explain the mystery right out of this story. I know, if we could only just pin down the astrological event of that place and time, we could explain how the Magi were led by that star and it would finally make sense. If we could evoke a scientific explanation, Christ's birth wouldn't need to be so mysterious. But the mystery is what makes it holy. The mystery means that God only knows, and God may have tossed a star in the sky to guide strangers to a child. Stranger things have happened in the Bible. This mysterious story means that God may also be guiding us if we could just look up from the GPS and accept that getting a little lost is the way to be found. This is Epiphany. And instead of careful intentions about this new year, which we've probably already abandoned, instead of beating up on ourselves for failing in a dozen ways today and it's only 11 o'clock, I think Epiphany calls us to practice a few things, but all of them in community, trusting that there is abundant grace when we mess up. First, look up. James is right, for the first time, it doesn't look blue in here. We can see, we can see where there were tarps. We can now see some light. I don't know about you, but I spend a lot of time looking down, and it's not because I'm extremely tall looking at my phone, looking at the sidewalk, looking at a book, staring at my computer, navel gazing, they call it, when we focus only on ourselves. In worship, too, I spend a lot of time looking at my bulletin, turning my eyes toward the ground in reverent prayer. It's important to look up. If the Magi had only looked down at maps, they would not have seen that bright star above or noticed that it was indeed moving, leading them, 
And when they finally arrived, they looked up and saw Jesus, the promised king, with their own eyes. What have you been overly focused on lately? Is God calling you to look up? To notice something or someone you've been missing? Give it a try. Just as I want to yell at some distracted people as they text and walk, jaywalk across Elm Street, look out, look up. Epiphany calls to us, look up. The Magi looked up and saw a star and believed it may just be something to follow. And this may be our second task during Epiphany, to follow a star even when we don't know exactly where it is leading us. Maybe instead of a star, it's a hunch you have about how God is calling you to serve in the world. Maybe instead of a star, it's an invitation to try something new, but you're scared. Sometimes we need to follow, even when we don't know where the star is leading. Whether it's in relationships or career plans or any aspect of our lives, make plans but hold them lightly. When the Magi finally arrived and met the Christ child, they worshiped him. They didn't know much about him, and I'm sure they spent many hours on that journey asking questions about this child. But they believed that Jesus was the king born to save the world, and they worshiped him. They offered the most costly gifts they had, and they were overwhelmed with joy. If we can seek Christ with only a fraction of their urgency, and a portion of their persistence, we too can experience this joy. The call of Epiphany is to worship Christ even if you're just getting to know who he is. But then what? From here the story gets messy fast. Read on in Matthew. But here's what I think. The Magi encountered Christ and then they took the light of Christ back home with them and out into the world. They came face to face with God and God's radiance must have just been shining through them, reflecting off of them. In the words of Isaiah, which we just heard and sang, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. I'm not always convinced this is good news. We are supposed to arise and shine? I don't think Isaiah knows how tired we are. Even after a little break, there is a deeper tiredness that I hear. And shining sounds like a whole lot of pressure. If God's glory has dawned upon us, are we supposed to act, think, or be a certain way, certainly more perfect than we live now? The important thing to remember, I think, is that we reflect God's light. We are not the source of the light. If we glow with our own happiness or joy this morning, unfortunately we know that this is not always a permanent glow. Life has its ups and downs. If we are inspired and shining forth brilliance that the world must know, soon enough we are proven wrong. We are not the source of all light and truth, which personally sounds like a relief. We are instead called to reflect Christ's light to the world. It seems to me that to reflect Christ's light means to look up and be near enough to Christ that we are catching some of that light. We can't give away what we don't already have. So to first bask in the light of Christ seems important. Come to worship, then look for God in the world. Seek Christ and the freedom he brings. And whatever joy, encouragement, love, or sustenance you've received from Christ is a gift to you, but not a gift to store up for a rainy, gray winter's day. It is a gift to reflect to the world. A friend of mine has been waiting for our church to ordain him for many years. Not only has this long wait been financially very costly, the process has been costly to his spirit as well. But Chris Wagaman is reflecting Christ's radiant light 
in his persistence, in his faithfulness to the call that God has given him to share Christ's light with the world. Recently, he wrote with such conviction that I just have to share this with you. He writes, preaching is a vocation to which I have been called, even if it looks as though I'm not going a traditional route in being called to serve a church, I'm going to have to find or make my own way. The word is too important to just keep inside if it is burning within you, no matter how imperfect your vessel. The call of the spirit transcends all human bonds and what must be spoken must be spoken. This is Epiphany, looking up, following uncertain roads, worshiping Christ, and reflecting Christ's light to the world. Because the word is just too important to keep to yourself. It, if, it, if it is burning within you, no matter how imperfect your vessel, you need to let it shine. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has dawned upon you. So let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen.